What comes to your mind when you hear the word Ramayana? For many people, it is the recorded chronicles of the life of an Indian prince, Sri Ram, whom they worship as a god. They proudly sing his glory and tell his stories. But for some, the Ramayana is nothing but a cleverly crafted fictional tale. People belonging to this category simply push it aside, labeling it as a work of imagination. So who is right? Was there a real Indian king by the name Sri Ram, whom a billion people still worship as a god? And is the Ramayana a true biographical account of his life? In this video presentation, I am going to put forward some of the most intriguing facts discovered by various researchers and by ourselves. It will be the first video in a series about the Ramayana. If my viewers are interested enough, then the other videos will be released on this platform. First of all, the Ramayana is no ordinary text. It is one of the most influential texts ever written by any author. The traditional cultures of the whole Indian subcontinent is greatly influenced by it. Scores of generations of adults and children have watched performances and have been listening to its narration for over thousands of years. The events in the Ramayana have been enacted more often than any other story in the world. It is the most important cultural tradition of Thailand, Cambodia, Indonesia, Myanmar, Laos, Nepal, Sri Lanka, and India. It has also been widely prevalent in Singapore, Malaysia, and Vietnam. The Ramayana is the great bond of culture which unites India and the other countries of Southeast Asia. So, if it is the real biographical account of Sri Ram, then we should find some concrete evidence to support his existence in some period. That is why, let us look at perhaps one of the most puzzling evidences first, the Vanar Sena. In the Ramayana, Vomaki writes, after Devi Sita, the wife of Sri Ram, was kidnapped by the Lankan king Raben. Sri Ram and his brother Lakshman set out to find her and save her from the clutches of Raben. But to do that, first they had to gather an army, so they head to a kingdom named Kishkinda, where a very different group of human-like beings lived. They were powerful and cunning warriors and were called Vanar. Most people mistake them to be just a group of monkeys, but the word Vanar comes from two root words, Ban and Nor. Ban in Sanskrit means jungle or forest, and Nor means human. So etymologically, the word Vanar means the people who live in the jungle. By the way, monkeys are called Kapi in Sanskrit. So if Valmiki had really wanted to talk about a kingdom of monkeys, then he would have probably used the word Kapi instead of Vanar. That is why it is highly possible that the Vanar were a different group of hominid species other than the Homo sapiens. And the Ramayana is the first historical text, which describes that human beings shared this planet with a race of intelligent beings. Then it is completely clear that modern humans or Homo sapiens and a humanoid species had coexisted at the time when the Ramayana was being written. But still, we cannot call the Vanar as complete humans. They had predominant characteristics of monkeys, such as they were physically much stronger than the humans and exhibited behaviors like restlessness and impatience. Some researchers think they might have gone extinct shortly after the events of the Ramayana because there is very little mention of them in another very important ancient text, the Mahabharata. Though these two texts are deeply linked with what we can deduce from the Vomaki Ramayana, we have come to the conclusion that the ancient kingdom of Kishkinda was in modern-day Karnataka, a state in southwestern India. You will be surprised to know that the Vanar kingdom had a very wise and powerful king called Bali. The Vanar lived there following societal rules and were experts in advanced warfare tactics. But the really shocking thing is, Vomaki says, the Vanyar not only inhabited southern India, but also came from some other parts of the globe as well. Vomaki wrote, the Vanar had also come from places where the sun shines for a very short time and the night is terribly long. So is he talking about places like Iceland and Greenland? Because there is no place in India where we find this type of variation in the duration of day and night. This is really a shocking fact